message out there, but these are time of what I call reconciliation and also a time to just take inventory of our lives and, and thank God for where we are. Now, I know a lot of us, we want to be a certain place, but right now, we just need to thank God for where we are right now. You know, it, it's a blessing to be among the living. And, and we have to always remember that when we wake up, it's another day that the Lord has gave us. And we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I don't know, for some people that day started out good and it ended up bad, but also some, it was their last day, it was their last wake up. But we just never know. I want to reach out to those families uh, uh, there in uh, the Miami area where the buildings collapsed there. You know, people in their bed in the safety of what they consider their own home and tragic things happen. But it, it, we just never know. We just never know. That's why it's so important for us to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis and, and thank Him. And thank Him for things that, that He's provided for us and given to us. You know, sometimes you may say, oh, it can't get any worse than this. Yes, it can. It really can. But the challenge is, the scriptures say he will never put more on you than you can bear. One of the things for, for a topic this morning, and, 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 and this is the question we must take inventory of ourselves to ask ourselves. Are you really honorable in the eyes of the Lord? Or do you consider yourself an honorable person? I'm not talking about an honorable person before men. I'm talking about before God. Some of us, we, we seek more honor before men and women than with God. But can you say that in the eyes of the Lord that you're considerable honorable in his, in his eyesight, in his view of you right there? You see, you may ask, why is that important? Well, I'm going to tell you why that's important. It's important because... A lot of the blessings come to those who are honorable before the eyes of the Lord. Things that above and beyond, I, I put it that way there, that God would do because of, of the way you walk in his word. You walk in his truth. And God honors that. He really does. To, to, to tell you what, turn with me to the book. And I'm going to just bring some scriptures that you know. But I'm going to bring emphasis on this. Why it's so important for us to maintain our honor. Our honor before the Lord. Sometimes we will give up our honor for worldly things and for other people, for situation. Hold on to your honor. Walk on, when I'm saying honor, walk in truth concerning God's word with yourself and with others. You know? Over in the book of 1 Chronicles, 4th chapter. That's 1 Chronicles, 4th chapter. I want to drop down to the Ninth verse. You know, we, we start talking about families and, and how God was rewarding for families and, and I would call it giving up certain things and, and certain prestige among people. And, and this particular ch uh, chapter here was the family of Judah that God was talking about his sons and, and how he was doing certain things and giving the lineage of the sons there. But in this fourth verse here, he got down to a person, and I knew you all know the story, about a person named Jabez, or Jabez, whichever you want to pronounce it. And, and, and look what he says here in the ninth verse, fourth chapter, first Chronicles, fourth chapter, at the ninth verse. And it says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. More honorable than his brethren. And his mother called him Jabez because I bared him with sorrow. Now, you think about that moment. She buried him with sorrow, so she named him that. In other words, she said he was a sorrow maker, but yet still, when he was born, he was honorable based on that. And I don't know if it was a, a sorrow for her or a sorrow for him because he walked in the statutes of God. Sometimes you can feel bad because you're trying to do what's righteous in the eyes of the Lord, and the world can reject you, but don't worry about that. Your honor should be before God. Look what it says here. And Jabez was an honorable man, that more honorable man than his brethren. And his mother called him, named him, called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O thou, O that thou wilt bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and over his lands, his possession, and that, that and that, that thy hand might be with me. And I want you. 
you with me, Father, please, and that thou would keep me from evil, protect me from my own self, he's saying to him, that it may not grieve me. And God, it said, granted him that which he requested. Why? He saw him as being an honorable person. You see, you'd be surprised what blessings you can obtain just by being honorable in the eyes of the Lord. Let me give you another example. And you all should know this particular passage because we, we, we went over it early part of the year here. Turn over to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 2 Kings, about the 20th chapter. You remember this story, but I want to just, just to let you see what this is all about. 2 Kings, 20th chapter. Talking about Hezekiah. See, I want, to, I, want to, I, want to, I want to remind you of this thing, why it's so important that don't let other people rob you of the one blessing that can you receive much more from God, and that's honor. Maintain your honor. It says here, over in 2 Kings, 20th chapter, beginning at the first verse, it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Oh, that, that, that's, a, that's a good prophecy right there, isn't it? For somebody to come tell you that, and then you know it's a, pro a prophet from God telling you that. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, I mean, he heard what the prophet said, but he still said, you know, I'm going to God. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee and in truth and with a perfect heart. In other words, Father, I, was, I, was, I always was honorable before you, Father, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, a four as I, uh, 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 I'm saying, Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, and on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days, six verse, fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. When you when you honor before the eyes of the Lord, you can ask what you will. And God respect. See, sometimes, and I use this term here, what you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Sometimes we would do things for others and, and we do it of the Lord and, and people may not even give you the respect or maybe not even acknowledge that you're doing these things for them. Don't worry about it. Who you were really doing, you was honoring God's word. Do unto others if you would have them do unto you. Give, and men should give unto you. Press down, shake it together. Run it over, should men give unto you. Somebody slap you, turn the other cheek. But give seven times seventy. See, see, those are things when you begin to honor God's word, even though it may seem somewhat detrimental to you, or you may have to see that you're taking more than you should normally take. Don't worry about it. God will honor that. Expanding your land, you know, and with your best. Uh, or, or in Hezekiah, giving you long life, extending when man say you about to check out. God said, no, you got, you got, no, no, I'm going to give you some more years. Fifteen more years added to it. This is what God do to those who trust him. You know, I, 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 I really believe that, that when we walk in God's honor, we have the world in our hands. And the fullness thereof. That's why God said, even though you're in the world, you're not of the world. Because even though the world has certain challenges that limits it, I will remove all those challenges and extend the heavenly spiritual gifts unto you because you're walking, you're talking, and you're living in my word. That's what he's saying. Even though you're in this world, 
You're not of this world. And all the things that govern this world won't apply to you. I'm giving you spiritual diplomatic immunity because of your honoring of my word. One of the other things that we saw, and even in Solomon life, turn over to 2 Chronicles, 7th chapter. These scriptures you know, but I want to let you know, these happened, these things were there because of the honor men showed towards God's word that depicted the life they lived before the Lord. When you honor God's word, you're honoring God. And in turn, God will reciprocate that to you by honoring your request. Making sure that people see that when you walk in my word, when you walk on my standing, when you walk on my truth, you will and shall be blessed. And you can ask for what you will with me, and I will hear that voice. I will return unto you whatever the canker worm is trying or has taken away. That's what God, that's what honor is all about. Over in, and then you all know this scripture here. It says over and over in uh, 2 Chronicles 7 chapter. Begin to level birth. This was a promise the Lord made to Solomon because Solomon honored the Lord and was saying, you know, Father, I'm going to build the house that you desire of me, that you want, the temple you want here. And, and God, it was an honorable thing. And what God said, he said, but, but I see what you're saying, Solomon, but this is what I'm requiring of my people. He says here, Verse 30 and verse 11, seven chap, second Chronicles 7, chapter, beginning at verse 11. Thus said Solomon, finish the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came unto Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon, verse 12, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. In other words, Solomon, you did what I requested. You honored me by making sure you did everything. And then you attached your house to do, make sure your house was similar. Walking in what I call a paraclete to my house. The way you lived, the way you conducted things. Because Solomon had some things that he had to straighten out. Now, he was a wise man. But Solomon had this, this wife thing and this, this concubine thing. But, but, but God overlooked it because he still honored what God told him to do. He went on, he says, verse 13, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, then he said, make this thing, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you this right now. It's time to take inventory of ourselves. Are we walking in God's word? Are we walking as honorable men and women of God? Are we following the statutes as true disciples? Christ said, I can never do anything of my own but what that I see and know of my Father. He honored God by not living his way here on the earth, but living the way God wanted him to live on this earth. This is why he was called the Word made flesh. He was the Word. That was God's honor walking the earth. That's why he says, Jesus says that, that, you know, you know, plead the blood, his blood. He took that to God and said, this is what I shed it on your behalf. God honored that because you did everything that I asked you to do. You died and you walked a life that was sinless on the earth, but you died for others. I'm going to honor it every time someone said, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over me right now. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over me right now. That's why he asked us to accept him as our Lord and Savior. He honored that right today. He's honoring that right today. But are you walking in that honor? It says here, If my people, verse 14, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear. So you can be praying, but he said, I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Do you need some healing in your land, in your finances, in your health, in your family, on your job, with your relatives? Do, do you need some healing right now? Did, did, 
Are you humbling yourself? Are you turning away from your wicked way? Are you beginning to walk in God's word, which is honorable unto God? He says here now, verse 15, now my eyes, she wants you to do it. He says, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Mm. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Verse 17 is for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgment. In other words, David was considered a man after God's own heart. Why? He honored God. Where are you today? Where, where are we today in that honor with God right now? Are we honoring his word by the life we live? Are we doing the things that his statutes command us to do? Are we being seen by God as honorable people? Or are we just seen by others? as being honorable to them because we're doing what they want us to do rather than what God is telling us to do. You see, you can't serve two masters, brothers and sisters. The Bible said every good, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of life. That's the word. Where are you seeking your gifts from? Where are you seeking your light from? I, I, I need to close was a book of Psalms. David, this was the first book David wrote. Turn to Psalms 1. Psalms 1. The first division of the book of Psalms. Book 1. This is how David started out. People consider man after God so hard. But look what he says here. Psalms chapter 1. It says, bless. That's, that's just Starting off, said blessed in bold letters. My Bible shows it. It says, "Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the, un of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful." But his delight, verse two, is in the law of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate day and night. People who delight in the laws of the Lord follow them. This is why the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he should give you the desires of your heart. But you got to delight yourself in the things of God, starting with his statutes. When you do that, and, and it says here, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be, look what it says in verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth fruit, his first fruit, bringeth forth fruit, his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In other words, God's saying to you that everything you touch, everywhere you are, it's going to be blessed. It's going to be blessed because of you walking in my stead. You delight yourself to me of honoring that. That shall be honored in the midst of confusion, in the midst of a desolate land, in the midst when everybody else is suffering. God will delight and honor you among that. It goes on here. He says, verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Just how David started out with it. As you delight, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of running water. No matter where you are, your land will never be a desert land. Your life will always be full of nourishment and blessing. Everything that you place your hands upon shall prosper. 
All because of you delighting yourself in God's word and fulfilling God's word and demonstrating God's word in your life. That's what it's all about. That's what God wants us to be all about. To those people who are called by my name, this is what it says. You have to turn from our wicked ways. Seek his faith. God will not only hear you, but he will heal your land. It's about honor, brothers and sisters. As you look in the mirror today, ask the question, am I an honorable person in the eyes of the Lord? As we pray, the scripture tells us in 1 John 1 and 9, that thou shalt confess thy sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. In other words, he'll bring you back in that state where that honor can begin. From this point on, seek God's honor in your life. Seek God's word for your life. Delight in the laws and the statutes of God, because they are health and life to you. They will keep your land nourishing. They will keep your land where God, when you ask God, God will begin to expand it for you. He will restore unto you what the canker worm has stolen or tried to take away. That's what it's all about. He will give add life unto those who may be sick or destitute. That's what God will bring. This is what the word is all about. Fathers, we come before you today. We come before you as humble people, thanking you for the blessings that you've already bestowed upon us. Realizing, Father, we can do nothing of our own but that which is sent from above. Help us to open our eyes to the truth, unstop our ears to the truth, that we may walk in the fulfillment that you designed us for, Lord. Jesus said he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. The life that the enemy, that this world had tried to take away, Father. The life, Father God, that would have been robbed by those who didn't trust and believe in your word. Father, we want that restored back on us today. We want to walk, Father God, in the fullness of your glory and allow it to be seen in our lives. We want the world to know that we are true disciples of yours, Father, following the statutes, honoring the statutes, and living by the statutes today, Father. And Lord, we know the promises, the promises will always be filled because, Father, we know you watch over your words to perform. I thank you today. I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Those, Father God, those listeners, those, Father God, who want their lives turned around, those people, Father God, who are seeking the truth about their own life, seeking the promise into their lives, fulfilling the things, Father God, and reminding you that, Father God, those things, Father, what they've been doing in secret, you will continue to reward openly, Father. Lord, I praise you. I thank you, and I count all these things done this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen.